What's the matter? I don't know what happened. Does he have it on? I think we lost all sound. Sounds like it. Okay. Yeah, I don't hear the rabbi or anybody else. Hmm. Yeah. Marvin, uh, why don't we uh, begin with uh, your announcements and your readings? This Got it. Okay. Morning. No problem. Okay. Travis, everybody, and welcome to Temple Beth Shalom. Welcome home to Temple Beth Shalom. Can, they hear? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great, thank you. Uh, I want to congratulate Ray Bolnick on her upcoming bat mitzvah tonight, and I know that we will all enjoy her recitation and her speeches. Um, we are really looking forward to this. Um, I have a quick announcement to make. I want to um, give our condolences to Sarah Jane Feldman on the death of her husband, Marty, this morning, and Baruch Dayan Ha'amet. Um, we have an announcement to make regarding the upcoming Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur services. We are calling every member of the temple regarding this to make sure that they are able to use Zoom and to join us. And uh, non-members who have joined with us in the past to make sure that they can join with us this year. We need people to make phone calls. Uh, if you would like to help us with this project, uh, please call B. Eisenberg or Nan Rubin. And with that, um, the prayer for tonight. Eloheinu ve'elohe avotenu ve'imotenu our God and God of our fathers and mothers. Let us take a walk. It's been two weeks since I have reached out to you. Still no answer. Maybe if we went for a walk, I could have your full attention. The virus is still with us and I am getting lonely in my isolation. But enough of that. I am tired of wallowing in self-pity. I am glad each day that I can see your sun come up and its heat warms my bones and I know that I am alive. But after months, I am tired of repeating the same daily tasks and yearn for something new. Now for our conversation, walk with me. The month of Elul is here and I recently heard from Rabbi Kaplan how important this month is for preparation for your inscribing me in the book of life at the conclusion of Yom Kippur. God, I know what I must do, but more important to me, how do I know what I am doing is enough? I spent some time on forgiveness I am now thinking of what occurred during the past year. Who have I offended? Who has offended me? Who do I need to ask for or uh -huh. give forgiveness? Yeah. I do not like to think about the past or to raise issues that will make me upset again. But you have told me that I must do this. So the list. I have begun another list. This time of charities that are worthy causes. It pains me that I cannot give to all and must choose. Can you tell me if I have chosen the right ones? Can you tell me if I have given enough? I will still wait, but I cannot wait for long. You have told me that the month of Elul is also a time for repentance and return. I have been told that the four letters of the name Elul are an acronym for the phrase in the Song of Songs, I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. We approach God with a desire to return and connect and my love is to me. God replicates with divine expressions of mercy and forgiveness. Despite the virus, my faith is still strong. I want to again go to my Shabbat services with my friends, but we cannot at this time without concern for our health and very life. Tell me how I can start to return to my Judaism without leaving my house. I know that I read, studying something about Judaism from your books. But it is difficult to do this without the ability to talk to others about what I am learning. Am I doing this right? Do I understand this right? Lord, I want so much to please you with performing your commandments for my redemption. But instead, without hearing from you and you're answering my questions, I feel guilty. I remember my mother and her words to me when I have not spoken with her for some time. She would excoriate me with, is there something wrong with me that you won't at least call me on the phone to see how I am doing? How did she know in advance what I was going to say? 
you can never be too busy to talk to your mother, or is there something wrong with your finger that you could not dial? She sure knew how to instill guilt. Is that what you are doing, Lord, by not answering me? Telling me that I can never be too busy to do your work. Instilling guilt in me so that I will do my very best to comply with your request for this most important holiday and to follow your commandments. I am beginning to see that when you're not speaking to me about what is to come or what I must do to prepare for this holiday, that it may be for my benefit. Maybe I do not need your voice to tell me what I have done my duty correctly. Maybe I will know it when I have completed my task during this month and can say to myself, God will be proud. My friends and family will be better. The world will be better. I have participated in Tikkun Olam and helped repair the world. My conscience is clear and somewhere a still small voice in the distance says that I will have a good yantif, if only online and by myself. Well, it's time to part. You have been a good companion to walk with, although if my memory serves me, you have not said a word. Come, I must get ready for Shabbat. My challah is almost baked, and I must put the candles out to light. You know that the Sabbath bride will be here shortly to share my Shabbat table and give me peace. Here, let me walk with you to my front door. Maybe next week we'll be able to walk outside if it will be safe. In fact, I look forward to having another talk walk with you. We could discuss one of the books that I am reading of yours. Lord, the Sabbath bride is here. I can relax. Before you leave, God, will you please give us your Sabbath blessing? God speaks in my heart. I will bless you and protect you. <clears throat> I will show you favor and will be gracious to you. I will show you kindness and will grant you peace. Thank you. Thank you, God. I know that I am still loved by you and safe. Until we get together again, Shalom Lehitra Ot. Goodbye. Until we see each other later, and let us all say. As I wrote this, I, I put in there this word about, you could still hear the still small voice. And I wondered where this came from. And my research, I found out that this came from the book of Kings, the story of Elijah. And Elijah goes out to meet God. And then the word of the Lord came to him. Why are you here, Elijah? He replied. I am moved by the zeal for the Lord, God of hosts. The Lord said to him, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Elijah thought of God as power and might, and he was right. God isn't limited. God's power is also in the whisper, the gentle word of reassurance that says to us, who are anxious, discouraged, and uncertain, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Marvin. Um, great. We just quickly uh, fixed a a quick technical uh, uh, snafu. It's actually a good problem. We we are at capacity tonight, so we've had to uh, make a quick adjustment. So um, uh, we're going to be working from my source. So hopefully everyone can can hear. We've actually done this setup uh, before for um, previous uh, bar and bat mitzvahs that we've done in the sanctuary. So. Um, unfortunately, because uh, we're, we're using this source, we're not going to be able to display uh, the prayers on the screen tonight. But you will get a very, very good view of the Bema tonight to be able to see and hear all that is going on. So just wanted to make that quick technical announcement. I mean, it is a good problem to have that we're all here um, crowded, technically crowded together uh, to be able to celebrate Ray. Um, this evening. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the, the rabbi. You'll, you'll, you won't be able to see yourself, but you'll be able to see you.
Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Uh, I want to wish you a happy Shabbat and also to greet everybody here for the Simcha that we have at long last. Uh, Ray, you can't see Ray, but she went like this, like for sure. Uh, she's been uh, waiting for this for all the time that she prepared for bat mitzvah originally, plus March, April, May, June, July, August, another five months of delay. And so, and here you are about to become a bat mitzvah girl. And uh, so uh, we're very proud and uh, you know, we're, and we like to see the big smile that you have. Uh, so with no, uh, uh, so, so welcome to everybody and uh, welcome to those in our sanctuary. Uh, and we begin our service tonight with the Shalom Aleichem, page 142. Mm -hmm. Now turn to the lighting of the Shabbat candles on page 120. I'd like to ask Caitlin Bolnick to light the candles. And then following the cantors singing in Hebrew, I would like to ask Chris to do the creative reading on page 124. All right. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hollows us with mitzvot, commanding us to kindle the light of Shabbat. May the door of the synagogue be wide enough to receive all who hunger for love, all who are lonely for friendship. May it welcome all who have cares to unburden, thanks to express, and hopes to nurture. May the door of the synagogue be narrow enough to shut out pettiness and pride, envy and enmity. May its threshold be no stumbling block to young or straying feet. May it be too high to admit complacency, selfishness, and harshness. May the synagogue be, for all who enter, the doorway to a richer and more meaningful life. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Caitlin. 
Uh, we continue with the Kabbalat Shabbat on page 138, Lafado D, and follow that with the Reader's Kaddish on page 144. <laughs> Now rise if we can do so comfortably as we turn to page 146 for the Borsen. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Ahavta Olam. Base Yisrael, Amcha Ahavta. Torah Umitzot. He came in his patin. Otonu Limadta. Al Kain Adonoi Elif Kainu. Bishok Benu Uf Kumenu. Nasia Bichutecha. Nasia Shima Ive Torcho. Umish Patecha. Leolam Roed. Ki Hain Ayenu Leore Yominu. Uvohem Neger Yomam Velayla. Rahab Koch. Al Tosir Mimanu Leolamin. Boruch Ato Adonoi. Ohev Amo Yisrael. Everlasting love you offered your people Israel. By teaching us Torah and mitzvot, laws and precepts. Therefore, Adonai our God, when we lie down and when we rise up, we will meditate on your laws and your commandments. We will rejoice in your Torah forever. Day and night, we will reflect on them, for they are our light, and doing them lengthens our days. Never remove your love from us. Praise to you, Adonai, who loves your people, Israel. Oruf ato Adonai, ohev amo Yisrael. All right, and now we want to sing along at home, the English. Offered me the opportunity to start singing. Yes. So. Just this one. <laughs> um, we continue with the Mecha Mocha on tape 158, and then following that, the Ufrotza Lenu from the Hashkivenu on 160, and then our Bat Mitzvah girl will then read Let There Be on page 161. Thank you. 
Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Adonai, help us to walk with good companions, to live with hope in our hearts and eternity in our thoughts, that we may lie down in peace and rise up waiting to do your will. Baruch ato Adonai haporesh Kat Shalom Aleinu, the Al Kol Amo Yisrael, the Al Yerushalayim.
and that was very enthusiastic. We rise to the to Tila, beginning on page 164 and continuing to 169 with Mitchell reading We Pray. <laughs> Pray that we might know before whom we stand, the power whose gift is life, who quickens those who have forgotten how to live. We pray for the winds to disperse the choking air of sadness, for cleansing rains to make parched hopes flower, and to give all of us the strength to rise up toward the sun. We pray for love to encompass us, for no other reason save that we are human, for love through which we may all blossom into persons who have gained power over our own lives. We pray to stand upright, we fallen, to be healed, we sufferers. We pray to break the bonds that keep us from the world of beauty. We pray for opened eyes, we who are blind to our own authentic selves. We pray that we may walk in the garden of a purposeful life, our own powers in touch with our power of the world. Praise be the God whose gift is life whose cleansing rains let parched men and women flower toward the sun. Baruch Ata Arnoi Mikaye Hakol. We pause now for a moment of silent prayer and meditation and follow that with a session.
standing and uh, we turn now from the Tzvilah to the Mishabara, which you can find on page 371. Um, we pray for all those in need of healing, whether with the Atanefes or with the Atavuf. We pray for all of those who are suffering with the after effects of coronavirus and all sorts of other uh, diseases. You can type in in the message board, uh, the names of those that you'd like us to pray for and to think about in our hearts and in our heads as we sing the Missa Bear, page 371. <laughs> It's now my honor and my privilege to ask our bat mitzvah tonight, Ray Bolnick, to come forward to address the congregation, which is now a maxed out congregation, and we have no capacity for anyone else. Well, God made me short. <clears throat> my parshat has, has seven is Exodus forty twenty, the very end of the building of the portable holy tabernacle in the desert. To reach a better understanding of the words of my portion, I read the English version of the Godai, the entire building of the Holy Tabernacle. First, it was told that a year after the miracle of the Red Sea and beginning of their journey of 40 years, there had been instances of disregard for Judaic belief. The refugees were a generation of slaves, discontents, and even some believers of other religious ways. Their forebears 
had suffered 400 years of slavery and Moses was leading them to a place they didn't know where or how. There was the instance of the golden calf as Moses returned from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments. It is not surprising that in the first month of the second year at the encampment before Mount Sinai, Moses had been commanded by God to set up a tabernacle in which Aaron and priests could hold prayers for all to observe. Each tribe had specific tasks for building and movement of the tabernacle with the ark, for this was holy work. Each shared responsibility. Aaron and his sons were assigned the role of priesthood with responsibility for overlooking the administration and direction of the enterprise was given to Aaron's eldest son, Itamar. The Levites were assigned the task of following the precise blueprint for the building of the portable tabernacle. Everyone in each tribe had a portion in the building by donating their diverse talents and materials for the structure and for the vestments of the priests. Betsalo of the tribe of Judah was a master builder. Ohoholia of the tribe of Dan was carver and designer and embroiderer. There were exact instructions including measurements for building and completing the tent of meeting with its art. Indeed, this parashat is the most detailed in the Torah. All the gold, silver, copper, the materials were listed by weight and worth in the Pekudah, including yarns and stones and colors for the vestments. All is open and known to the people to maintain integrity and honesty and honor. No secrets, no way for recriminations. All this was remarkably written about 600 BCE after centuries of verbal transmission. My portion explains the completion of the finished portable tabernacle. Picture how they lived and worked to travel down desert sand, either barefoot or in light sandals. Certainly their feet were dirty. The presence of God in the form of a cloud already covered the completed holy tabernacle. Now Moses placed the labor, the washing basin, between the tent of meeting and the altar. He poured water into the labor as commanded by Adonai. Aaron and Aaron's sons are instructed to wash their hands and feet in reverence before entering the presence of God. Now Moses could not enter the tabernacle because the cloud had settled and the presence of the eternal filled the tabernacle. When the cloud lifted, the Israelites set out on their journeys. But if the cloud did not lift on the seventh day, they would not set out until the cloud rose for the eternal had rested, and so had they. For the eternal rested by day, and fires appeared in the tabernacle by night in view of all of the house of Israel throughout their journeys. Thereby, the seventh day was set as the day of rest for all Israel. It does not say Saturday or any given day. It says seventh day. No need for a GPS to guide them on their long journey.
Hi, Ray. Hi. Uh, um, it's at this point in the service where it's customary for the rabbi to deliver a short uh, speech to the bat mitzvah and uh, perhaps to give a small present. Uh, and in, in our case, I'm going to take this off so you can hear me better. Um, in our case, it's just an incredible privilege for me to be standing here on this day. Um, I, I, I can't think of any precedent in my 25 years of being a rabbi. Um, you have, ever since I was visiting here about 18 months ago and I met you and I did some sort of a sample Torah study and you were one of the, the leading participants and I, I think you were mentioning some uh, obscure sect in ancient Judaism and I was like, wow, she knows about that. Now, uh, ever since then, you have been a tremendously active participant in virtually all of our study programs and all of our services. You've been one of the most uh, devoted members to the congregation and especially to Judaism and to learning about Judaism. And this is really impressive for anyone of any age. And uh, so, so it's, really, it's really a tremendous honor. And uh, it's also been a wonderful experience for me to become your friend and to play a small role in, in preparing you for this day. I have to point out Andre uh, Ivory, who's done so much to help you prepare, but he had a lot, a, a very easy time of it because of your tremendous diligence and insightful intelligence and really tremendous motivation, tremendous, at an, at an age where most people would be content to just bask in the sun and, and uh, hang out by the pool. You're busy, 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 busy attending all sorts of study groups. And, and that the sermon that you wrote was really, was really impressive. And I'm glad that we made a contract for you to write, ghost write my sermons for, for the next, uh, for, for the upcoming High Holy Days at the very least. So if you like my sermons this coming uh, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, you know who to thank. Um, now we did make a, a small accommodation to you. Uh, you'll note that there was this little wooden platform because you're, you're how tall? Four feet eight. Four foot eight. She's four inches uh, less than she was uh, a few decades ago. Um, but you're, you're small, but you're very mighty. And uh, so um, I'm, I would push the screen back so because my top of my head is cut off as a consequence. But <laughs> it's more important that you see the uh, Ray in her, her full glory. Um, I do have some presents, as I promised. And so I'm going to present them one at a time and I'll bring them over to you. You don't have to go anywhere. Uh, the, I don't know what's in them, uh, but this is uh, this is from the sisterhood and it comes with a card. And so I'll give it to you and you can give it to your son or daughter-in-law to, um, to pass on. Um, I have here uh, from Jill Clements on behalf of the congregation. Uh, this is, a, I, I happen to know what this is. This is a necklace with Jerusalem of gold on it. And so uh, I don't know if you want to sing a few bars of Jerusalem of gold, but this is a uh, very nice jewelry. And uh, wait, and uh, Bev, um, Beverly Fletcher, uh, our music director, uh, has prepared another, if packages are indicative, this is really, really going to be impressive. I don't know what's in it, but this is also a present uh, from her that she asked me to uh, deliver to you. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, these are just three small tokens of our immense respect and appreciation uh, for you uh, and for all that you have done and, and are doing tonight. And so 
Um, we wish you a Shabbat Shalom. And now we're coming to the, your actual Torah reading, um, and uh, which, which you've been practicing. Okay, good, good, good. And we have, we have, we have at least one Israeli on the, uh, on the Zoom with us tonight. So if you make any mistakes, he'll, he'll know, he'll know. He'll know. And uh, Marvin will know, and I will know. The three of us will know. <laughs> Shabbat shalom and ma mazal tov. Uh, we continue with the service for the uh, reading of the Torah, beginning on page 362 with the Ein Kamocha. Please rise. <laughs> to be reading from the portion of the week that would have been, if we'd been able to do the Bat Mitzvah in its proper season, which was late March. And so we're going back in the Torah, the book of Exodus, chapter 40, which is Parshat Kikude. And uh, Andre is now finding and opening the Torah scroll to the right spot. And uh, we'll push the little wooden thing over so you'll have the proper height. And uh, we're going to call you up now to read the story. The first Aliyah is going to be read by Judy Sagan and Harold Barrett. And they're not here in the sanctuary with us. So we're going to ask them to zoom in and to recite the blessings before and after. And then we'll read the Torah, Ray. And then on the second Aliyah, you'll do the blessings as well. So, uh, Judy and Harold, are you able to yes, we are. and prepare for the Torah blessing? Yeah, Harold will do the first and I'm doing the second. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Harold. Are ready? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
ורחצו ממנו משה ואהרון ובניו את סטודנטם ואת רגליתם. בבואם אל אוהל מועד ובקורבסם אל המזבח ירחצו כאשר ציווה אדוני את משה. ויקם את החצר סביב למשכן ולמזבח ויתן את מוסף שער החצר ויקור משה את המקור. ויקס הרנן את אוהל מועד וכבוד אדוני מלא את המשכן. Thank you, Judy and Carol. Okay, blessing for you. Blessing for you. Baruch es Adonai HaMavorach. Baruch es Baruch Adonai HaMavorach. Baruch Ato Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asher Bachar Banu Miko HaAmin. Benatin Lanu Es Borado. Baruch Ato Adonai Noten HaTorah. ולא יקור משה לבוא אל אוהל מועד כי שכאן עלו הענן וכבוד אדוני מולא אס המשכן ובהלוס הענן מעל המשכן יישאו בני ישראל בכל מסעיהם ואם לא ילך הענן ולא יישאו עד יום הלוסו. כי ענן ארונוי על המשכן, יומם ואש תהיה עליי לא לענו. כל דס ישראל וכל מס אוהב. ברוך אתו ארונוי, אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר נותן לנו תורה אמת וחיי עולם נותן בתוקנו ברוך אתו אדוני נותן התורה. For some reason I was never asked to join the chorus. We continue with the service for returning the Torah to the ark. Thank you. 
Well, it looks like you just can't get rid of me. Well, a bat mitzvah for me, I never thought of it. Soon after my 99th birthday, in a long distance talk with son Bruce, I casually mentioned that when I was young and learning in an Orthodox synagogue near home, girls never were offered the study of bat mitzvah. I thought I heard Bruce say offhandly and, and facetiously, why don't you? He doesn't remember that remark. It must have been my own words that simmered in my mind for quite a while. And one day I shared them with Rabbi Moss, who instantly became enthusiastic and wanted to line up my 100th birthday for the event. Temple Beth Shalom was about to transition into a choice for a new rabbi. With my date still far ahead, I began to have qualms as I observed the beautiful ease of TBS Bat Mitzvah girls, and I expressed them to number one son on the phone. Howard instantly said, Mom, you can do it. Now that's a challenge. And Ira and Mitchell just pushed ahead with them, with them. After my first introduction to Rabbi Dana Evan Kaplan at his very first Friday night services, Rabbi Moss brought the director of our Hebrew school and programming, Andre Ivy, to me as my bat mitzvah guide. Wow, the best. I didn't expect this. Added to this, Rabbi Kaplan's encouragement and oversight became a constant help. Early in our meetings, Andre and I talked about process and attitude. It's been a joy working and sharing with him. I learned long ago that prehistoric man sought answers to awe, fear, hope, and reverence. Travel showed me these basic needs are adapted differently and powerfully across the world. The Havara at Temple Beth Shalom, headed by Abe Metz, may he rest in peace, explored more Jewish thought. Past Torah study with Rabbi Sheldon Moss, and for more than a fruitful year with Rabbi Kaplan, have inspired respect for the understanding and relevance of Torah on a deeper level for me. I am proud to be a Jew because the Hebrews were the first to stubbornly live the concept of oneness. And I like the action stressed nowadays of tikkun olam, making the world around you better. The more we learn, the more we interplay, uh, uh, of elements, nature, human interchanges, everything indeed merges into one, a mighty integration of life and for life. Helen Keller is quoted in a note in our Bible here at TBS. I believe that the essence we call God is in me as the sun is the, in the color and the fragrance of a flower, the light in my darkness, the voice in my silence. At regular TBS services, 
we repeat. And on that day, and on that day, Adonai will be one, and God's name will be one. Bayom Hahu, Bayom Hahu, Adonai Echad, Ishmo Echad. At Temple Beth Shalom, I have found community and a better understanding of my own religion as I see the humanity of Judaism. When my granddaughter Katie was a young child, she asked me if I believed in God. I asked her if there was more than one way as she walked home from school. Yes, she answered. The same is true of religion. Now I want to make particular thanks to Rabbi Dana Evan Kaplan, to President Marvin Barris, and to Andre Ivory for arranging this belated bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, despite COVID interference and the loss of a party with some 90 people across the world. The wait has made it more than precious. I thank the many who have enhanced, enhanced my daily life. That includes my four sons, their families, my large extended family. My husband Arnold lives in my heart and in my sons as they express humor and wit like Arnie did. My husband gave us music Judaism, much more. I stand here embraced by my husband's talus. I also stand before you wearing his lifelong talus. At 80, he bought a new talus and at 89 was buried in it. Well, I feel good wearing his lifelong talus like a hug. My parents, Rose and David Schiff, gave me life making this day possible. In 1920, they placed two pound me in the first incubator brought from Germany, Germany to Coney Island in New York. My mother lost two preemies before my arrival. I'm glad I was born and miraculously am still making the journey of life. Thank you once again, Ray, for your magnificent, inspiring words. And uh, we, 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 we all are in awe of your accomplishment and looking forward to much more in the coming months and years from you. Uh, we now turn to the closing prayers as the cancer recites the Alenu as we turn to page 586.
We turn now to the Mourner's Kaddish on page 598. As we remember those who passed away recently, um, we remember Marty Feldman, who passed away uh, early this morning, uh, and we grieve with his widow and their family. Uh, and we also remember the recent deaths of Jake Moss, Cy Friedman, Sheila Cohen, and Irma Kalman. And we remember the yard sites of Samuel Alpert, the father of Arnold, Amelia Gordon, the mother of Harvey, uh, Joseph Lang, the father of Roberta, Ernest Martin, the grandfather of Judy, David G. Robbins, the father of Russ, and Francis Weiss, the mother of Morse. Uh, you, if I haven't mentioned the name of the loved one, that you'd like remembered, either someone who passed away in the past year or at this time in years past, please uh, type in their name in the message board. As we recite the Mourner's Kaddish, page 598, we join together. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabah, v'yalma dibra kurute, v'yamlich malchute, v'chayechon v'yomechon, Ubachaye to call Beit Yisrael. Ba'agala ubizman kariv v'yamru. Amen. Yehe shme rabam mevorach li'olam ulame omaya. Yitvorach v'yishtabach v'tpoar v'tuman v'yitnaseh. V'yitadar v'yitalel v'yitalel. Shme d'kudsha v'yichu. Leila min kol b'chata v'shirata. Tush b'chata v'nechemata. Dami Rambi Alma Vimru. Amen. Yehe Shlomo Rabba Min Shemaya, Vachayim Aleinu Ve'al Kol Yisrael. Vimru. Amen. Ose Shalom Bim Ramav, Kuya Ase Shalom, Aleinu Ve'al Kol Yisrael. Vimru. Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel and all humanity. To which we say, Amen. We now turn to page 123 for the Kiddush and the Hamotzi. Um, I uh, think the cancer was trying to help me out here with the wine. And so this is Passion Cellars by Salvadori Vineyards, the Malbec. So we're deviating from the uh, Kedem kosher wine. And uh, um, I'm gonna, what? Oh, well, thank you, Andre, for the wine. I'm gonna leave it here if anyone wants to. I brought some plastic cups and you have to take yourself in this, uh, this era of everybody cares, cares, tries to be as careful as possible. We join together in the Kiddush. Baruch HaKadamar, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Puri HaGafen, Amen. Baruch HaKadamar, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kiddushanu B'Mitzvoto B'Ratza Baru, L'Shabar Kodshya Baha Uratza Mimilanu, L'Ikaron HaMase Boreishi, New York, the Elal and Mikrae Kobe, the Heritage of Mitzrayim, Kibanu Bacharta, the Tanu Kitashta, Mikomim, the Shabbat Kotchaka, Baba Ugratu, Kim Bakanu, Baruch Adonai, Mikadesh. And now the kala, which um, we're, this week is sliced and it's got raisins in it. So 
Again, I'll take a slice and then if you'd like to, you can pass it around. Let me grab a smidgen. Just a smidgen, right? Thank you. I got about 25. There you go. Life is not fair. Um, we're coming toward the end of the service. Uh, so, Ray, if you'd like, we can we can do a late service as well. Do you want to redo everything? <laughs> but um, I thank you for letting me do this one. It was a, a real pleasure, and and you were wonderful through the whole thing. Well, thank you, Ray, and I'm sure you're going to be getting mazaltovs from just tremendous amount number of people who've seen this and uh, uh it's also recorded so it'll be um uh, it'll be available to for others to watch who couldn't be with us tonight um we now conclude with the priestly benediction and then follow that with Tefilat Hader. <laughs> May God bless you and keep you. May God's light shine upon you and may God be gracious to you. May you feel God's presence within you always and may you find peace, happiness, health, and much, much love. And let us say, Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Love you. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Thank you for joining us for services this evening. Um, like I said before at the beginning, we have capacity tonight. We were a packed house, um, and it's for certainly a celebratory cause that I think we all can agree is worthwhile, one for <laughs> sure. And um, uh, we want to thank everyone who joined us also on Facebook Live this evening and to um, all of the wonderful 
spirit and energy here um, in our sanctuary. Ray, Rosalto, you know, this is uh, my Fridays, even though it's been a while since we've been together on a Friday. Um, my Fridays are going to be a little bit different. Hopefully, once this pandemic is over, we can have coffee in Danish again. And, and may, we, uh, may we pick another opera to go see again very uh -huh. soon. Um, so, um, Mazaltov again, Rabbi Cantor, thank you very much. Beverly, wonderful playing as usual. Um, we're going to leave the stream open just for uh, um, about um, another uh, five to 10 minutes for everyone to say hello. We're going to invite uh, Mitch and Chris and, and Ray up to say hello to family and friends again. And we definitely want to thank you and see you here again. Don't forget, if you viewed us on Facebook Live or you want to uh, see the service again on Facebook Live, uh, don't forget to drop a like, a comment of appreciation. That is always certainly welcome. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. See you again soon. <laughs> You can unmute yourself, please. Yeah, please come on up and. <laughs> Special thanks to Mitch and Chris for all their help. Oh, yeah, right there. And their son, Bruce. Mazel tov. Good. Oh, it's beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.